What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I compiled hands from a couple of cash game sessions I played at Deuces. There's going to be a lot of action in this one, so without further ado, let's get into it. In this first hand, Under the Gun straddles to 5 and I pick up Ace Queen suited in the cutoff. I race to 20 and the Under the Gun straddler is the only player to make the call. We go heads up to a flop of 6, deuce, 9, 2 hearts. Under the Gun checks. Not much on this board for me apart from the backdoor flush draw and 2 overs. I decide to check back. The turn brings the three of diamonds, giving me the nut flush draw. This time, under the gun leads for 30. I could go either way between a call and a raise. I decided on a call this time. The river is the six of diamonds. I make the nut flush. This card doesn't seem to slow my opponent down though, as they bet out 70. I have to take a moment and think about whether I want to raise or call. The board pairing means I could obviously be beat by a full house. My opponent could also be on the bluff, in which case they won't call a raise. So that's two arguments for just calling. I'm not sure if they would call a raise with a 9 on a board this wet. I think they would most likely call a raise with a worse flush, even though the board is paired. Looking back on this hand, I think the optimal play is probably just to call, but in game I actually put my opponent all in. My stomach churns as they almost snap call, uh oh, did I just run into a boat? No, and they don't have a flush either. They hit a super disguised straight on the turn with 4-5 offsuit. I find the suck out on the river and my opponent can't find the fold. I'm pretty sure my all in was a terrible play in theory but it looks like I picked the perfect spot to do it. I win a massive pot and this session is off to a hot start. In this next hand we're playing a $5 Dramaha bomb pot. Six of us see a flop of 575, and I look down at a jack high straight in my hand. Oh my god, this is so sick. I also have a gut shot straight draw on the board, so when action checks to me, I bet 15, and both the small blind and big blind make the call. Time to draw. I obviously am going to stand pat with my straight, and the turn comes a jack, giving me top two, a redraw to a full house, and I still have the gut shot straight draw. Action checks to me once again, and I want to pile as many chips into this pot as possible. I bet 50, and both players call. Still three ways to the river, which comes a beautiful 8 of spades, giving me the nut straight. What's also great is that while a full house is possible, I block 7s, 8s, and jacks. So it's not impossible, but improbable that one of my opponents has a boat, in which case I've got the nuts. I salivate as the small blind leads out for 60, and I'm probably visibly drooling as the big blind calls. I pause for a moment before putting both my opponents all in. The small blind pretty quickly folds, but the big blind almost snap calls and once again, no boat! They have trip nines in their hand and the nine high straight on the board. Wow, this is so sick. Hard for my opponent to put me on the nut straight when they block it three times, but here it is. And uh, I scoop a pot of almost a thousand bucks, the biggest pot I've won since starting the vlog. Sun running in this session, let's see if I can keep it going. We join the action mid hand on this one, I put out a $10 straddle from under the gun, the cutoff called, button made it 40 to go, I called, and now the cutoff also makes the call, so there's already a nice pot brewing as we go three ways to a flop of 3, 4, ace, 2 diamonds. I have ace, queen off suit. I decide to check and flow and I'm not too happy to see the action check around, especially when the turn comes to 6 of diamonds, putting a potential flush out there. That being said, I can't be afraid of monsters under the bed, and I think I can get a ton of value from my opponents if they happen to be holding a big diamond in their hand. I want to make it pricey for them to draw though, so I bet 80. The button is the only player to make the call, and as they do, they ask if I want to run it, meaning there would be no more betting and we would just go to showdown. I doubt they would ask if they had a flush, so I'm pretty confident I have the best hand, but this is a friendly home game, and this is the player against whom I sucked out when I made the flush on the river, so I agree, and we go heads up to the river, which comes a break nine of clubs. They flip over ace ten of hearts, and I take another pot down. In this one, the button puts out a five dollar straddle, and I pick up ace king off suit in middle position. There's a raise from under the gun to 15. I three bet to 50, and the cutoff min clicks it back to 100. Under the gun gets out of the way and action is back on me. This player is on the tighter side and has around 400 behind, so I'm not really loving this spot. I could just call and see a flop, but I'll most likely have to check fold if no ace or king comes. 
Things could get pretty gross if I hit a king and my opponent keeps blasting. On the other hand, I don't want to just fold ace-king here, so I take a page from the player in the previous hands book and ask if they want to run it for 100, to which they agree, so I make the call and on to a run out we go. I thought I was most likely flipping, but I'm actually way behind as my opponent flips over two red kings, but no worries, I hit an ace on the flop, easy game. My opponent does pick up the nut flush draw though, but again, no problem. Here's footage of me dodging all the hearts in the deck, and once again, I pick up a nice pot. Next hand, there's an under the gun straddle to 10, and I pick up pocket kings. I'm going to bump up the action to 30, and the under the gun straddler is the only player to make the call. We go heads up to a flop of 8, 5, 9, 2 spades, and under the gun checks to me. I'm not really sure how much to bet here. I feel like by betting big, I'm just playing my hand face up, but I do want to charge my opponent in case they're on a flush draw. So I end up betting 35, which is probably too small, and under the gun makes the call. Heads up to the turn, which comes the five of spades, completing the flush and putting a pair on the board. And this time my opponent takes the lead and bets 30. Now that's definitely too small. I'm never folding for that price, so I call. And the river comes the four of diamonds. My opponent now goes all in for 21 bucks. I wish I would have paid more attention to their stack. I, I guess I couldn't really see with the dealer in the way. Anyway, for 21, I'm calling all day, every day, if they got me, GG. I flip over my kings and they show queen seven offsuit for the flush and straight draw. Unfortunately for them, they didn't get there and fortunately for me, I pick up yet another pot. This wraps up the first session and before we head into the next one, I wanted to show you this kick-ass shirt from my buddies at High Poker. I find it hard to find poker clothing that you can also wear away from the table but not with these guys. I really like what they do. They got hoodies, t-shirts, hats, everything to help you look your best as you get three outered for your tournament life. I'll throw a link to their website and Instagram in the description box below. Make sure to check them out and show them some love. All right, so fast forward one week after this insane session and we're back at it. This time I put out the $5 straddle from under the gun and I look down at 9-8 suited. Under the gun one calls, Middle position raises it up to 15. I'm a sucker for a suited connector, so I make the call and under the gun one comes along. We go three ways to a pretty sexy flop of ace, six, five, two clubs. I pick up a flush draw and a gut shot. I check and flow, under the gun one checks, and the initial raiser throws out a hefty bet of 50 just above pot. Based on my history with this player, I think I can safely put them on a hand like ace king, ace queen, and I don't think they'll fold if I raise. I also don't really love calling, it's a little fishy, but I got tons of equity, so I make the call. Under the gun one folds, so we go heads up to the turn and bink, it's the three of clubs. I'm not sure my opponent will bet again if I check to them now that the flush got there, so I think the best way to get the money in is probably to just bet and maybe make it look like a bluff or a semi bluff. It looks like my opponent has about a hundred behind, again I should have paid attention to their stack. If I had known, I would have just jammed the flop and they probably would have called. Instead, I give them a chance to make the correct play and fold as they toss ace-king face up. Nice fold, on to the next hand. In this next one, I pick up ace-queen offsuit in middle position. There's an open to 11 from under the gun. I'm going to 3-bet to 35 and under the gun makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of 5-king-3-2 hearts. Under the gun checks to me, and I think this king high board favors me as the three better, so I decide to throw out a c-bet of 50, and once again, did not pay attention to my opponent's stack. They check raise me for a total of 84. Another spot where I'm kind of forced to call given the price. I call, and my opponent shows pocket knights. The turn comes the queen of hearts, no problem. I now have my opponent drawing dead to one out, the knight of spades. The river is the jack of diamonds and I'm going to take this one down. Not playing my best poker, but who needs to be good when they're lucky, right? In this one, we're back playing another Dramaha bomb pot. Five of us see a flop of 10, five, six rainbow. And I look down at jack, jack, five, five, deuce. Yes. A flop is set on the board and I have two pair in my hand. Action checks to me and I throw out a bet of 25, which the middle position and button call. Heading into draw time, I'm going to toss my deuce and hope to draw another jack or maybe the case 5. 
Dealer flips over to turn, it's the 7 diamonds which puts a potential straight, and I draw the 9 of clubs. With a possible straight and another potential higher set than mine on board, my set of 5s is not looking as strong, and while Jack's up is a decent draw hand, it's not a premium by any means, so I decide to pump the brakes and check, and action checks around. When everybody checks the turn and the river comes a deuce, I'm pretty confident I have at least half the pot locked up, so I bet out 40 and the middle position player is the only one to make the call. They announce two pair on the board. No good, my set is gonna take it down and they don't have much in their hands so my two pair is good as well. And I scoop this pot, let's go. In this one I pick up uh, pocket jacks in the cutoff. There's a couple of limps in early position before the low jack raises to 14. The age old question, what to do with pocket jacks? Well. In a tough game, I might consider 3-betting, but in this loose passive game, I think a call is fine. The button, big blind, and middle position players seem to think the same. We go 5 ways to a flop of 7-6 jack rainbow, I would say that's a pretty good flop for pocket jacks. No c-bet from the low jack, and I have such a lock on this hand that I think the best play is just to check and let one or more of my opponents catch up. Still 5 ways to the turn, which comes to 7 of spades. Boom! I turn a boat. Action checks to the low jack who makes a delayed c bet of 20. I think the standard play is just to call, possibly inviting other players into hand. But looking at the board, it's highly unlikely that someone has a jack since three of them are accounted for. Did one of my opponents call a 7x raise preflop with a 7 in their hand? Probably not. With the second spade on the turn, I think it's more likely that I'm up against the flush draw, and with four other players in the hand, it's possible someone's in there with a middling pocket pair, and I want to extract max value from those hands before a card that's not a spade or an over card to their pair comes on the river. For that reason, I decide to go for a non-standard raise to 60, and unfortunately, everybody folds. Last end of the vlog, we're going back to the Dramaha streets in this one, I get dealt jack 10 6 5 4 and the flop comes 6 4 4 2 spades, I flop a boat. This hand is going to be a little tricky to play because there's likely going to be 1 or 2 over cards coming and in Dramaha it's very easy for someone to make a bigger boat by the river. Nevertheless, with a flop boat I'm going to bet 15 which the low jack, high jack, button and under the gun 1 players call. 5 players going into draw time, I'm obviously going to hold on to my 6-4, so I decide to throw away jack 10. I draw a king and a deuce, so I don't have much going for the draw hand, and the turn comes to 9 of hearts. As I mentioned before, I think I got all the value that I could from my hand, so I'm going to switch into showdown mode. I check, and action checks around, so it looks like I might have missed out on some value. That's the downside of being out of position with 2 players to act behind. Still 5 ways to the river, which comes to 10 of hearts. Again, I'm just looking to get to a cheap showdown. Looks like the hijack is going to charge 20 bucks, which the button, myself, and the low jack are willing to pay, and it looks like I'm going to split the pot with the button, who has trip aces in their hand. Really strange that it didn't bet the turn. My full house is good, and I win half the pot. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I've got another one coming where I'll be compiling more hands from a couple of other sessions and it's going to be just as action packed so I really look forward to seeing you in that one. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, good luck at the tables, and I'll catch you in the next one.